Okay, so the third cause outcome is to synthesize the transient response, steady state response, system stability, and to use root locus technique and PID. Okay, so what I'm what I have just said just now, maybe, maybe uh, I don't know, maybe you you don't understand what I'm just repeat just now, but basically uh, this subject is about uh, when you have a system. So the first thing that you need to understand about the system is um, is the system stable. Stable means that, uh, for example, uh, let's say your car. Okay, let's say if you have a car, and if you have a a shock shock absorber, the absorber in, in your car near the tires. Okay, so is the absorber uh, stable? Stable means that, uh, let's say if your car, uh, if you drive your car to a bumper to a bump. And then after, uh, let's say you drive at a high speed, maybe 50 km per hour, for example. So after you drive over the speed bump, will the car vibrate? And how long is the vibration? Meaning that uh, will the vibration um, uh, continue over time for, for a long, long, long time? Or will the vibration stop? So this is the uh, the stability that we are that I'm talking about, and this stability we we don't want the car to be in vibrating uh, mode when whenever it uh, whenever you drive through a speed bump, you want it to be vibrate for a while and then maybe uh, maybe the, the vibration stops so that uh, the passenger in the car feels comfortable during uh, the driving. Okay. So basically in control system, we are going to learn about how to determine the stability of a system. Let's say you are given a system, um, is the system stable? How you want to determine the stability? There are a lot of methods that we are going to learn in this subject. So the, the method that, uh, that, uh, that I mentioned has been stated here in the course outcome. For example, like root locus technique, steady state response, transient response. These are the methods that we are going to use to understand the system stability. And then uh, after you understand the system stability, uh, we are going to do something to the system to make sure that uh, the system, uh, for example, an unstable system, system to be stable over time. So we use uh, a controller so the most common controller in uh, in control system is PID here. So we are going to learn about PID maybe uh, at week 13 or 14. Okay. So the main uh, idea of the subject is about uh, analyzing the system stability. So uh, the course content, so we have six chapters. Okay, so the first chapter is about basic control system concept. And then we have modeling of the dynamic system. So if you are weak in dynamics and statics, so you might have problems with uh, chapter number two. Okay. And then chapter number three, we will analyze uh, the system, uh, the control system. So here we are going to analyze the stability of the system. So there are a lot of methods. And then we are going to uh, learn about root locus techniques and frequency response technique, which are uh, methods to understand more about the system stability. And lastly, we are going to for, uh, learn about the ID controller. So these are the reference list. So if you are uh, or hardworking, you can uh, find the first book here, Dominis. Okay. Sometimes uh, the questions are coming from this book and sometimes the example also coming from this book. Uh, the other books are not compulsory, but if you can uh, find maybe the solution, manual, then it could be useful for you, all right? Okay, so for the assessment, uh, 
we are still discussing about um, how to assess this subject. So last semester, what we did was uh, we have 20% midterm and 20% final exam. And then 60% uh, project and quiz. But uh, this semester, maybe we are going for a 40% final exam. Okay. But still uh, haven't decided yet. So I will let you know maybe uh, by next week. Okay. Because there are a lot of uh, issues uh, regarding the either 20% or 40% final. So uh, later on, I will uh, update, update to you about this. Okay. All right, for project, so I will brief the project on week three. So at the moment, uh, you need to form group up to three students, okay? So you don't need to uh, be in group of three. You can do your project alone or you can do in pairs, okay? And this project will require MATLAB. So please uh, download MATLAB. Okay, pirate, okay? Tak payah beli. Jangan beli, okay? So please uh, download MATLAB, uh, uh, try to uh, look for um, a, a version with a smaller size, okay? Uh, I think um, uh, we are going to use Simulink. So Simulink, um, so you don't have to down, um, install all the libraries in in my lab, okay? So you, you need only Simulink. Okay, so we get back to the question. So is this subject easy or not? Okay, so this is the results for uh, last two years. Okay, so the result is has always been like this. Uh, there are a lot of students uh, in this range uh, of uh, grades okay from c plus to f and there are uh, only a few students that uh, can score a and same for uh, last year sem 1 2019 so only one student got a and there are a lot of students uh, falls within c plus and below So the reason why I show you this is that uh, I, I, I don't want to say that this subject is hard. This subject is uh, uh, it's actually hard, but if you uh, study or do the exercise, then you can at least uh, get C, okay? So to get a, at least C or if you are going for an A, so please uh, don't uh, skip any classes, okay? And then please ask question, even though if you have a uh, very, very dumb question. And uh, important notes about asking question, um, if you want to WhatsApp me asking question, uh, please um, introduce yourself first, okay? Because if you don't introduce yourself, uh, I don't entertain you because I don't know who you are. So please uh, do it properly. Introduce yourself and ask your question because uh, this is also to train you in, re in real life as well. Whenever you, you want to ask question to other lecturers, so please uh, introduce yourself first because uh, sometimes uh, it could uh, make the lecturer angry to you because they are bu busy, so suddenly you ask question. So uh, that's uh, the most mannered way, okay? Please uh, introduce yourself first. Okay, so stupid questions are like, um, uh, don't ask me about something like uh, uh, integration of x equals x square over 2. Kenapa eh? Uh, don't ask me about integration and differentiation. If you want to ask me about, let's say, uh, Sir, kenapa uh, adsorber kereta tu kira sebagai control system? Uh, macam tu boleh tanya. Don't ask me something so terlalu dumb lah, okay? Macam mathematics, like mathematical concept, I think you should uh, try ask your quest, uh, the question to your friend first, like a simple mathematics uh, uh, concept. Like 
something related to uh, control system or this subject maybe uh, later on when we learn about derivation of uh, the dynamics the, the dynamic of system maybe if you want to ask uh, why spring constant is k for example uh, that is still acceptable but if you want to ask about uh, mathematical concept i think you need to uh, go back to your uh, lecture notes uh, on maybe ODE uh, calculus, okay? And also, uh, please do tutorial or assignment when I give to you. Try to do it yourself. And I know maybe you are very, very clever, then you, you will copy your friends. But please do it yourself first. And if you are uh, even uh, cleverer, then you will send this question to uh, check okay, but um, macam nak cakap macam uh, macam uh, hantar kat check ni uh, berdosa macam uh, uh, whatever uh, yes memang hantar kat check berdosa meniru dekat check berdosa whatever tapi uh, this is for your own good if you do it uh, by yourself first before uh, copying your friends okay uh maybe good for uh, your future maybe if you work in a industry that requires uh, you to apply control system knowledge there are a lot of uh, industries that uh, actually uh, requires you to maybe plot graph uh, that we are going to learn later on in this uh, subject uh, which means that if you don't know uh, to plot graph uh, let's say bot, bot plot later on then you might have trouble uh, in your uh, work life later. So please uh, try to do it yourself, okay? And uh, lastly, please do your project. So most of the students who are failed, they don't submit project. I don't know why, maybe the group members you chose just now are not uh, reliable. Uh, so please reconsider your group members. So I saw uh, messages just now asking for uh, one more group member to join your group. Doesn't necessary to have three members. If you think you have two members in your group is enough, then uh, you, you may, might as well proceed with that group. Because sometimes if you have three group members, then one of the group members are sleeping uh, members, then uh, it's a waste of uh, your time okay, to carry them uh, along in this project, uh, in this project, and then in the end, uh, task score pun dapat C, okay, bazi master je. So the project is, uh, it's not hard, it's easy. Uh, there, there will be guidance uh, given to you. So if you, uh, uh, the the difficult part of the project is to you are required to write reports. So uh, if if let's say your member is very lazy to write report, then that's the problem that you will encounter later. All right, penat the baby. So we will start with our first chapter, chapter one, uh, basic control system concepts. Okay, so if you have any question, you can always ask me. Uh, in this Google Meet, okay? Uh, jangan malu-malu, saya tak saya tak pernah marah orang lagi, okay? Uh, and I know some of you know me already, so please ask question if you don't know if, or if you don't understand what I'm explaining or the concept that I'm going to explain to you, please uh, ask me, okay? Don't do not uh, reluctant, okay? All right, so we start with chapter one, basic control system concept. So after completing this chapter, you will be able to define a control system and describe their applications and describe the basic features and configurations of control system such as input, output, plan, open loop system, closed loop system. And number three, describe control system analysis and design objective. And lastly, describe a control system design process. Okay, so uh, control system are an integral part of modern society. So 
there are a lot of applications of control system uh, in many many aspects of uh, engineering especially so we have control system in mechanical engineering for example car absorber just now in computer science in your computer your microchips require a lot of controlling in there so if you learn uh, CP you learn about if else for loop while loop all of that are controller okay controlling uh, a system and in electrical engineering in designing circuits you are going to learn uh, you are going to need a control system a controller same with instrumentation instrumentation and electricals are basically the same thing and chemical engineering so power plant when you uh, design power plant you need a control system and there are many many other things so this is an example a simple example of a controller so this is a liquid level control system which you usually find in toilet okay kat tandas kat rumah uh, tadi baru pergi toilet kan so um, basically what happened here is that uh, this tank contains a uh, water so whenever you flush uh, your toilet then the water will uh, go out through this valve so when the water goes out then this buoy will drop and open this pneumatic valve here and water will inflow and fill the tank so after some time after the tank is filled then the buoy will raise and close this valve so the effect of buoy open and closing the valve is an example of a controller so this is a mechanical controller it doesn't require any uh, electronics to control the level of water another complex uh, maybe a more complex example of a controller is when you have a electric furnace let's say an electric furnace where you want to melt uh, metals for example so we want to control the temperature inside the furnace so when you want to melt uh, a metal you want to make sure that the temperature is in the right range okay so if let's say you you uh, overheat some metal maybe you will get uh, amorphous materials for example okay so here we want to control the, the the heat element here the heater so let's say you set a uh, temperature here 70 degree for example so uh, let's say you set here from the program input 70 degree i want to heat the furnace at 70 degrees celsius so the system will tell the heater to heat the furnace until 70 degrees celsius so the temperature, uh, the thermometer will measure the temperature in the furnace. So if let's say the temperature is uh, exceed uh, 70 degrees Celsius, then a signal will be sent to the system telling the computer or telling the system that the temperature has exceed 70 degrees Celsius. So please uh, stop heating. Okay, so the computer will tell the heater stop eating because the temperature has exceeded so if let's say uh, the temperature reduce below 70 degree then the temp uh, thermometer will measure and tells the system that the temperature has reduced so the computer will ask the heater to heat okay to increase the heating so that the temperature will increase back to 70 degrees Celsius. So here there is a, a control mechanism, but how it controls, we don't know. But we know that there's a control system inside this uh, electric furnace. And this is another example, another complicated example where you want to control uh, this robotic hand here. So this robotic hand 
the purpose is to pick up this black box here and put it on this work machine. So the movement of this robotic hand is measured by the camera. So let's say uh, when the hand uh, moves, let's say uh, you want to pick up the box here, but the hand is moved uh, and then located slightly, uh, maybe uh, a bit far from the box. Okay? So the camera will measure and then send signal to the controller and tells the controller that the robotic hand is not on the right location. So the controller will then tell the actuator to, to move the hand, robotic hand, so that it is uh, going to the right location and pick up the box here. So here, the sensor is the camera because it measures the movement of the robotic hand. And the robotic hand, we also call it as an actuator because it actually uh, causing the mechanism or the movement uh, when asked by the controller. So from the example that I showed to you, there are a lot of components inside a controller. So now we are going to uh, learn about uh, what is control control system and what are their components. So basically a control system consists of subsystems and processes or plants assembled for the purpose of obtaining a desired output with desired performance given a specified input. So let's say you want to drive your car at speed 80 km per hour. Okay, so your desired uh, your desired output is 80 km per hour. So you input uh, your speed, 80 km per hour, and then the car will move. And then the, the output, the actual output produced by the car, meaning that the actual speed of the car might not be exactly as 80, degree, uh, 80 km per hour. Maybe it could be less, it could be more. So uh, the control system will try to make sure that the speed of the car is the same. The actual speed, the desired speed, and the actual speed is the same as what you want. Okay? So if you want 80 km per hour, then the control system will make sure that the car will move uh, at 80 km per hour. So that's uh, the purpose of a control system. So you have an input or desired, uh, desired response, a control system, and the actual output, the output that you, you, you get from the system. Okay, so in any control system, there are four elements. So there are four elements in a control system. So the first elements are the input or your desired desired output, okay? Your desired, you, what, what you actually want on the system. So that's the input. The second thing is the output. So the output is the actual uh, response from the system. Okay, so uh, for example, the car just now, when you want 80 km per hour, uh, when you press uh, the pedal, uh, is the car, will the car move exactly at 80 km per hour? Or maybe less, maybe more? So that's the output obtained, okay? And another element is uh, subsystem. So subsystem is any system that helps controlling the output. Okay, so subsystem is any subsystem in the control system that helps controlling the output. We get back to this later with example. And the last element is a plant. So a plant, it's a system in which its output is the one to be controlled or a set of machine parts functioning together. So the purpose of which is to perform particular operation. So the plant, for example, uh, the car speed just now. So the plant is basically the whole car. So the whole car is the plant. So you want to control the speed of the car. 
So the things that you want to control, which is the car, is the plant, okay? So this is another definition uh, from uh, Norman Nees regarding control systems. So a control system consists of subsystems and plant assembled for the purpose of controlling the output of the plant. Okay, tak keluar final soalan macam ni. Define a control system as uh, defined by Norman Nees. Okay. So there are two types of control system. Okay. So the first type is open loop. And second type is closed loop. So closed loop control system is also known as feedback control or automatic control system. Okay, we will uh, look at more example later. Okay, so open loop, basically you have a system that the output is not compared with any reference input, okay? Uh, the accuracy of the system depends on calibration. And in the presence of disturbance, the open loop control system will not perform the desired task. So for example, here is a washing machine. So let's say you want to wash your clothes when you insert coin, the uh, laundry, when you insert coin to wash your clothes, then the timer given is maybe, let's say one hour. So one hour, then your clothes will be clean. So let's say uh, your friend, uh, your enemy, uh, jealous, jealous on you. So he stopped the wa washing machine. So he stopped the washing machine halfway. And then you realize that your washing machine has been stopped. So you continue your washing machine. So the continued process, uh, it just continue the time uh, that has been stopped. So let's say you wash for one hour, your friend stop it at half an hour. Then when you continue, then it will continue for the remaining 30 minutes, okay? Then the cleanliness of the clothes might not be the same as if the washing machine continuously wash the clothes for uh, one hour without stopping. So when you stop the process, then the cleanliness of clothes will be uh, disturbed, okay? So this is an example of an open loop, meaning that you want to wash the clothes, you give a specific time. Then you want that the clothes to be clean. But um, if the system is stopped, then the cleanliness of the clothes uh, will not be the same as what you desire, okay? Because it's not uh, being compared to, to the input or to your desired, uh, desired cleanliness. So meanwhile, a uh, closed loop uh, system the difference is that it has uh, a measurement that measure the difference between an input signal and the output signal, which is fed to the controller. So the controller can can know how much uh, difference between the input you want and the output obtained from the machine, from the system. And then the controller will uh, try to improve the process so that to reduce the error and bring back the output to your desired value. So let's say the washing machine just now, if you have a control system in the washing machine that can measure the cleanliness, then if your friend stop the process, the washing process, then the controller can measure that, oh, the clothes is not clean yet. Please uh, increase the time for washing. Then the wa washing machine uh, instead of wash the clothes for the remaining 30 minutes, then it will continue maybe a bit longer to make sure that the clothes is clean or as clean as what you desire, okay? So that's the difference between open loop and closed loop. But we will uh, see more example later. So uh, the difference between open loop and closed loop is that in closed loop, it has an additional subsystem known as a sensor. So here is two example. Uh, the top one here, figure A here, is open loop system. And figure B is closed loop system. So figure A here, you have an input, follow through a controller and process. So when you have a disturbance, for example, the washing machine just now, 
so your friend stop the process then you will get an output but the output is not compared comparable to the input or your desired uh, your desired output okay however in a closed loop system it has a sensor in the bottom here so the sensor can measure the output and then bring back to the input and then compare between the input and the output so the cloth is the cloth clean as what you want so if not then it will continue the process until the error e here is reduced to approximately zero so when the error is zero then the process will stop okay so the difference between uh, open loop and closed loop is that it has a sensor in closed loop that can measure the output and then compare the output with your desired uh, output the in, uh, the input here this is an, another example of um, open loop and closed loop system so let's say you have uh, you are in a room that has a, a bulb that can uh, bright brightens the, the room so to con to open the to turn on the bar then you use a on off switch so let's say if if there is a sunlight from outside which makes the the room becoming too bright okay then the output will be the room is uh, very very bright but the system will not uh, automatically dim the bulb so as to control the brightness however in a closed loop control system there's a sensor so here a light sensor will measure the brightness of the room so let's say there's a sunlight then the room becomes very bright then the sensor will tell the controller to reduce the brightness or to dim the bulb okay so when the bulb dims then uh, the brightness of the room remains constant okay? remains the same as what you want okay so that's the difference between open loop and closed loop okay this is an example uh, of the flush system in toilet okay so the bottom one here is the regular uh, flush system that you found in um, all toilets okay most toilet in 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 the world so this is a manual uh, uh, flush system where you need to fill in the, the tank by manually adjusting the valve. So when the tank is empty after you flush, then you need to turn, uh, you need to open the valve to make sure that the fluid uh, flows and fill in the valve. So here there is a there is no control mechanism that can automatically open and close the valve. Okay. So the top one here is an open loop system. The bottom one is a closed loop system. So this table uh, lists the differences between open loop and closed loop system. So uh, there are a lot of uh, criteria. So the first criteria is uh, the construction. So open loop system is easy to construct and simple in maintenance. However, for closed loop, it will require more components because you need sensor, so it require more components. And the cost for open loop, it's uh, of course less expensive and closed loop is uh, higher in cost due to the sensor. And regarding the stability, there is no stability problem uh, with uh, regards to open loop. But for closed loop, the stability is a major problem. So uh, the stability mentioned here is regarding the oscillations. Okay, for example, like the uh, the flush system just now, uh, the stability will uh, maybe can be defined when when the valve uh, is automatically open, then the water might might flow in the tank and then maybe uh, maybe overflow maybe underflow maybe some of the water might uh, 
flow out of the tank. So that's uh, one of the example of stability problems. Okay. So stability that we are going to learn in this subject mainly comes from a uh, closed loop system. Okay. So we, uh, what we want, we want to learn is how to correct or reduce the error due to uh, stability in closed loop system. So regarding the disturbance, open loop system is uh, very, very prone to disturbance. Okay. So if there is a disturbance, or external disturbance, then uh, the system will be uh, uh, will be uh, the output will will be disturbed, meaning that the output will not be the same as the input. However, for closed loop, the system is not sensitive to any dis external disturbance because the controller can uh, can control the outcome of the output. And regarding the calibration, open loop system requires uh, calibration every time uh, for every use. Meanwhile, for closed loop, there is no calibration required. And when to use uh, open loop system? So you use open loop system when the system is very, uh, very hard to measure the output. Okay. For example, like washing machine, you don't know how to measure the cleanliness of the cloth. So there is no sensor that can measure the cleanliness of the clothes, then you can use open loop system. So closed loop system is used maybe in cars to measure the uh, speed, okay, speedometer. Okay, so uh, we go back to the elements, elements of the control system. So here is an example of a uh, open loop control system uh, that controls the brightness in a room. So here, the room is the process okay, or the plant because everything occurs in the room. And the actual light, the actual light intensity is the output. And then the desired light intensity, the desired light that you want is the input. And the switch and the bulb here are the subsystems. Okay, subsystem are the, the, the other things that helps in controlling the brightness or controlling the system. And the bulb is the actuator because the bulb is the mechanism, okay? So here actuator is the mechanism by which a control system acts upon, okay? So the bulb is actually the mechanism. So the actuator. Here is another example of a control system in which uh, you want to control the temperature uh, inside a room. So what is the process? So the process here is the room here. So everything occurs in the room. And the output is the actual temperature. And the input is your desired temperature. The subsystems are the system or the things that helps controlling the temperature. So here the subsystem are the switch, the knob, the temperature setting knob, the air condition, and also the room. Okay. The room maybe not. Okay. And lastly, the actuator is the air condition. Okay. So this is the, the flush system. So what is the plant or process? So the plant or the process is the water tank. Okay? So everything occurs in the tank. And the output is the outflow of water. So the, inf the input is the water inflow. So the subsystem, we have the controller here and the buoy or the float, which acts as a sensor. And lastly, the actuator is this valve here. So the controller actually control the mechanism of the valve. So the valve is actually the mechanism, okay, not the buoy, okay. And this is the example electric furnace just now. So the plant or process is the electric furnace. The output is the temperature 
inside the furnace and the input is the temperature input temperature given by a uh, user okay the subsystem are the other things that helps in controlling the heater so you have ad converter interface amplifier relay and also the computer here and lastly the actuator is the heater so the system basically controls the mechanism of the heater okay we skip skip yeah. okay so the design process um, okay so um, the design process uh, to design a control system so first thing you need to uh, determine uh, the components uh, in the system so let's uh, go to the uh, example here okay so let's say you want to con uh, control the uh, antenna here the rotation angle of this antenna so you want to control the position uh, to convert the input to uh, the input uh, by by the user to a desired output okay to the actual output which is the um, rotation or the movement of this antenna so first we need to know the layout of the system so here uh, the antenna maybe have a gears connecting the uh, potentiometer the input uh, rotation that you you will give uh, to the system so you give it to this potentiometer so the potentiometer is connected uh, with a motor and the motor will rotate the gear that eventually rotates the antenna and then you you also want to measure the actual rotation of the antenna so you put another potentiometer here so that it can measure the actual movement of antenna and then feedback to the uh, controller so uh, we assume that the antenna has a three gear system and then some electrical circuits in the antenna so we have gears and we have uh, electrical circuits and we have the amplifier here the circuit for the motor and then the gears the antenna uh, we can simplify the antenna in uh, in the form of uh, a cylinder here so this cylinder uh, represent an inertia or mass of the antenna and maybe some uh, viscous damping uh, mechanism that uh, maybe due to the frictions of the antenna with uh, with air for example and then from the uh, schematic we can uh, draw a block diagram so this block diagram uh, is the same as uh, the block diagram that we uh, that I've shown you just now like this one okay so uh, in this subject you will uh, see a lot of block diagrams okay so this is an example of block diagram so you have a potential meter where you can input uh, your desired rotation and then a controller, a plant, and then a sensor here, another potentiometer that can measure the actual output angle. So you have a summing junction here. We will go back to summing junction maybe in week four or five, which uh, actually measure the difference between input and output and then calculate the error. So from the block diagram, then you can uh, analyze the system maybe plot uh, something okay plot something from the the system so here uh, one of the example of plots where you can plot uh, the actual response the output response over time so maybe uh, some of the uh, response maybe uh, has uh, some some sort of vibration here okay meaning that maybe when you ask the antenna when you want the antenna to to rotate maybe 30 degree then the antenna might uh, have some uh, vibration okay, maybe uh, it rotates at 30 degree 
but the rotation uh, uh, not um, the antenna will not stop exactly at 30 degree maybe it uh, maybe slightly vibrate between 31 degrees a degree or maybe 33 degree maybe 29 degree so the vibration uh, from the antenna due to its movement maybe maybe the effect of friction and so on can be represented by this graph here so this graph basically uh, obtained from the movement of the antenna and sometimes if the system is uh, uh, is controlled uh, controlled by some uh, by a controller then you might get the second uh, graph here which is uh, it increase uh, the rotation of the antenna will increase but very slowly but eventually reach a steady state here Okay. Okay. So uh, sometimes the system can be uh, can take some time for it to achieve stability. So the black line here. Uh, later we will uh, learn more. So this black line here represent the steady state or the state where the system perform. Uh, optimally okay. or in the case of antenna antenna will stop moving okay, at this uh, black line here so I think that's all for this uh, lecture so I want to give you tutorials and uh, maybe you can try it um, and then we can discuss uh, this tutorial next week so this is uh, an example of past year question. I think this is midterm question. So if you can try this question, then um, we can uh, discuss uh, next week, okay, on Tuesday. And this is a second tutorial. And this is also past year question. So for this question, you can always find it in uh, internet, okay? Bukan dekat check. So you can find this uh, in internet by maybe copy paste ke ada jawapan dia online. The answer is online. And lastly, this is the third tutorial. So you can try this and maybe we can discuss next week. Okay. So uh, that's it for today's class. Uh, any question that you want to ask? Tanya dia dalam kalang ke Oh, jap. Nota ada kot dalam kalang. Tapi nota lain sikit. Nota dia okay. uh, uh, lain sikit lah. Tak ada tutorial kot. Yeah, I will uh, up, upload this uh, video later on in YouTube. And I will send to you uh, the tutorial. So, uh, I will send to you the link to the video. So, you can uh, always watch the video for the tutorial. Oh, so, thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, so menjawab dah soalan uh, VJ. Attendance, uh, semua ada. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so uh, uh, please try the tutorial. Maybe we can discuss later, okay, next week. Uh, so Sam ni uh, beza sikit lah. Saya tak nak bagi quiz macam uh, Sam-Sam sebelumnya. Okay, mungkin quiz, uh, maybe I will give quiz. Maybe uh, I will tell, I will let you know first before uh, I give you quiz. Maybe uh, week three ke week four, maybe uh, uh, not, not frequently, okay? maybe uh, three weeks, uh, one one quiz, one quiz for every three weeks or uh, every four weeks. Okay, something like that. Okay. So if you have any question, you can ask. And if you if you don't have any question, then uh, the class ends here. Okay. Thank you and assalamualaikum.
Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.